traditionally speaking, when we're here, we always get to catch up with D-backs president and CEO, Derek Hall. That is certainly part of our Chase Field experience on opening day, and we welcome Derek Hall into the show. Good to see you. You're looking great. You're Bernsie, looking thank you. Appreciate that. Gamble, good to see you. And, and you did. You, you were throwing the ball? We played catch. I we, saw that. We, we had a and catch. And you said a catch. Right. Yeah, we had what a catch. What do you go with? You say you had a catch I, well, or you we, catch? we always grew up with had a catch, but that's a, I don't know if that's a New York thing. But it was I think always it's had, a New York thing. We always yeah, said, you want to have a catch. Do you want to have a catch? Uh, we had this conversation with Merrill Kelly. The first time I ever heard have a catch was Field of Dreams. Yes. That was the first time. I'm like, have a catch? Play catch, yeah. Have what, a catch. I don't know what up with. Right, yeah. So you want to have a catch. I, so now I, I, I say both, but I, that Gambo got me thinking. I think. Okay. So I'm texting my friends like I'm pulling all these. These players all say it's play catch. I have my my guy. All my guys in New York are like, man, dude, those guys are a bunch of millennials and Gen Zs. Of course they play catch. Right. You know, like, hold on, hold on. I like that I'm called a millennial. <laughs> can, can, can I make a can I make a comment here? Strange yeah. that a bunch of people w- from New York would think that they're the center of the universe. <laughs> yeah. right? I'm, I'm shocked to hear. Yeah. That Five guys from New York think that they're like like their way or no way. Yeah, it's shocking. Uh, I never would have imagined yeah, we that. We just grew up. It was have a catch. You want to have a catch? catch. Yeah. <laughs> um. So we're here. So for I mean, first of all, this I gotta. I, I'm trying to remember a year ago opening day. We were here, but we didn't do the show here. We came as fans later that night after our show. But I gotta imagine for the organization, this is probably the most normal feeling opening day probably since nineteen. You, right? you said it, Bernsey. Yeah, we had the two years of the pandemic, and then and then last year we still weren't without restriction, so it still wasn't right. And you know, and then we started off so poorly. By the time we were able to open up. Without restriction, people didn't want to come out, right? I mean, what are you going to come see that uh, team that's completely out of it? And then you look this year; we've got a really tough schedule, so we got to we got to come out of the gates a little bit stronger because we are going to have a lot of fans coming back here, especially tonight. Now, you know, are we going to sell out? No, we didn't have enough time to sell out. We've sold the same amount that we would on a daily basis if we had started back in January like normal. Okay, but we didn't know when we were going to play. We didn't with the lockout. So once we found out, and you're able to market in mid March. We're still going to have thirty five, thirty six, whatever it is, thousand tonight. It shows the excitement for the people to want to be back out here. Yeah, I, I I think there's a lot to look forward to, and I don't know how you feel about this. I mean, you look at the opening day roster, and I think that this roster is going to look a lot different. It might be as soon as two months from now, but definitely three or four months as we hit the summer. With just a vast amount of talent, you guys have one of the best farm systems in all of baseball. Crazy. Alec Thomas is probably six weeks away. Carroll could come up this year. You've got a plethora of young pitchers that we were just talking about before that, you know, uh, you know with, with Frias and, just, and Nelson and guys that are on the verge of and being fat, here. And Jameson, all these fat guys. is yeah. you know it's got all this. So Chaconi. I think that yeah. this talent, this roster, you, 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 this roster is going to look a lot different. So I think that's when there's going to be to me a lot of excitement about the future of Diamondback baseball because fans are going to get to see it. Thomas is going to be one of the best defensive center fielders, and Carroll's going to be one of your best players. And the pitching that you have, it's in it, Perdomo's. So I do think you're very close to turning that corner and having these this great young team that you want to build around. I do too, Gambo. And I think you know the fact that so many of them cut their teeth last year and they had never been in a ballpark with four decks. And they came in here and they learned how to play and they had a lot of mistakes. And then you look at where we came up short last year. It seems like every game, come fifth or sixth inning, we, we were either tied, we had the lead, then you hand the ball over to the bullpen and all the wheels come right, off. Day, but I got injured. Right? Tyler Clippert yep. was injured and you had a yeah. revolving door. We're going oh, to find guys that are on waivers, guys that are AAA, double A's, bringing them up. And so we knew we had to shore up the back end of the bullpen. We knew we had to bring in coaches who had credibility and were laser focused. I mean, you could get Stromy in here, you know, and you get you get Banny in here. It's, it's unbelievable, the guys that we have on the coaching staff. So they're great working with the young players. But I'm, as you said, I'm excited about our farm system where we're at. When we hired Mike Hazen, we had a bottom five farm system. Now we're a top three, top four, anywhere you look in any ranking, and we have this pipeline. That's what we need to do in this market. Have a young team, sustainable team, and you got guys coming up behind them constantly. And when the time's right, you go and you make the right trade acquisition or you go out on the free agent market. But this is where it has to come from. It seems to me, and we talked about this when the, the announcement came down, that the extension for Cattell Marte was in large part kind of based on, okay, by the time these guys really are here, these young guys really are here and really become major league contributors. That 
that's right about the time Cattell Marte's old contract would have expired and he would have walked out the door. You kind of need that. He's going to be then your like veteran cornerstone for that next generation. Was that a big part of the thinking behind extending him when you did, why you did, and how you did? A real big part of it. And the fact that he was excited about the young players coming up. He told us he liked the youth. He liked, to see, he liked the, the talent that was coming up and wanted to be a part of it as well. He's got to be that elder statesman. He's got to be the most productive player we have. He's got to stay healthy, and he knows that as well. But, you know, it was good for both. We didn't have to do it. We had him under control for three more years. We were no urgency on our part. He didn't have to do it. He could have waited, and he could have been a big free agent splash himself. So I think this was one of those that was great for both sides, made a lot of sense for us because now you've got him in place to really help the young players as they're coming up. And vice versa. He's able to continue to play in the same uniform. He's comfortable here. He's been an all-star here. And he can also coach and be a leader for those kids, too. Baseball's got a lot of parity. We, we looked it up the other day. Since the Diamondbacks won the World Series in 2001, what is it, like 15 different? I think it was 15 different 15 champions. 15 different champions 14, in baseball. Yeah. yeah. And, I they, don't, and they don't go back-to-back. I don't look Never. at pay, I don't look at payroll as an excuse because of the Tampa Bay race. You, so you can't. Right. The Padres have a gazillion dollars. The Dodgers have a gazillion team. Dodgers. How do you how do you feel you can compete in a division with teams like that that can way outspend you? Yeah, I think I think we have to, right? We have to look in the mirror and realize who we are in a lot of markets. You just mentioned one with Tampa. There's a lot that have gotten 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 it done. The A's did it year after year. The Twins have done it. You know, there's plenty of teams that can get by because they are committed to their drafts, they're committed to their international signings they're committed to player development and that's what we're doing now and you you can easily compete if you have the right talent you make the right decisions we say this all the time gamble we can't make a mistake right if we make a mistake we're in trouble it's going to set us back yes money to us that's the, that's that's hurt, an example hurt, of a team hurt that, that hurt us because of the the amount of money or the percentage that he had of our overall payroll if it doesn't work you're gonna you're gonna pay for it you look at a team like the Dodgers, the Giants. Now the Giants are very careful. They're, they're, you know, they don't spend the money that other teams do. If they make a mistake, they can just they can get over it. They can go make another mistake if they need to. But I also have to give the, the Dodgers a lot of credit. You look around their infield and outfield. A lot of those guys came from the farm system. So they're not just writing big checks. They do a great job at scouting and player development, too. So you, you need to have a blend. And, and in a market like ours, we've got to make the right hits and, and, and the right picks in the amateur draft and on free agent signings internationally. Derek Hall, president and CEO of the Diamondbacks, our guest here at the Burns and Gambo Show on this opening day. I was talking with a friend earlier, and they kind of pointed out that in many ways – the preseason predictions in Major League Baseball of all the sports might always be the most wrong. You know, like like there's there's a lot of variance. And, and I, I haven't done the research on this as it relates to other sports, but I looked at last year, they were really wrong about the Giants. They were really wrong about the Mariners. They were really wrong on the other end about the Cubs and about the Nationals. And we're talking about like a 20-game difference. Yeah. How wrong do you think the preseason predictions are about the Arizona Diamondbacks this year? Well, I understand them, and I don't blame them for, for putting us where they have. Have and the fact that we're not we're not even talked about, I get it. And you know what? We earned that last year. That's what we did to ourselves. But I think you know I think we're going to compete. We're going to be a very competitive team. I don't know what this stand. I don't like making project predictions or projections. This team could win seventy games. It could win eighty five games. I'm not sure. But if I'm making my own predictions about this this division, and I'm looking at the Dodgers and their roster, I'm looking at the Padres who are playing here for the next four games in their roster, looking at the Giants and their capability, I get it. I completely understand it. But I also like that our guys are just going out there, zipping their mouths, got a little chip on their shoulder. They have a lot to prove, and they have to clean up what happened last year. Again, we did it to ourselves, and we've got, we, we need to play better baseball. Tell us about what's new and exciting for the ballpark this season. There's a lot, Gambo. You know, we have a lot of new partners here. We're excited that Chick-fil-A is here. We have Zoyo Yogurt. We have Black Rock Coffee. We're bringing in cold beers and cheeseburgers at some point in the next couple of months. I'm going to get my food this year, right? You are going to get day. your food this year. <laughs> okay, yeah. Last year I You're lost. Get oh, oh man! No. Last oh, year, man. I, no. Hold on, hold I, on. I had the over under on Gambo bringing up opening day hey. last year at seven minutes into the interview. I the ate, over hit. I ate seventy two bucks <laughs> last year. And, and, I did. I ate seventy two dollars. And he let me know. And I, I felt I, awful. Yeah, I, yeah. We 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 had problems last 
podcast opening day. You know what? Again, you don't only have to perform well on the field. you got to perform well off the field, too, to get people to keep coming back here. So, Gambo, I'm glad you're coming back tonight. I know you bought tickets tonight. I did. I did. So, uh, a <laughs> oh, lot, lot of new food, a lot of new restaurants, lot of new things food. for people. <laughs> our chef. What? I took our what? Chef, I just... Our chef came up with, like, 20 new items, 29 new items that you're going to love and you're going to get on time and you're going to somebody... be happy about. I saw somebody on a burger for like 150 bucks. One of the ballparks. Did you see that? No. Somebody's got a crazy burger with like lobster on it for 150 dollars. It's like 150 bucks. Mm. I'm telling you, what are the, I'm gonna, I'd, I'd, rather, you, you, I'd rather have a catch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or play catch, or <laughs> hey, I, or whatever. I'll yeah. take a burger. It's 150 dollars. Honestly, I'll just be happy with a hot dog. Uh, I'll be I would go with a hot dog and hey. a beer, and we'll be good to hey, go. Listen, I was reading in my uh, in my my D backs news because I was reading. You can get like a hot dog for 2.99 here. Exactly. Yep. 2.99. Hot dog, corn dog, popcorn, soda. You're 2.99. Exactly right. I get a Pepsi. I get a hot dog for two dollars and ninety nine cents. And a fourteen ounce beer for four ninety nine. It's the most affordable in baseball. <laughs> it's, how about that's, that? That's yep. great. Yeah. That's great. Yep. Derek, truly, uh, best of luck this season. I, I have no idea what's going to happen this year, but but you know you got a couple of big fans, baseball diehards here. I know. So appreciate uh, you guys we, a lot. Uh, we are happy to be here. Thanks, Bernsey. Thanks for being here, Gambo. Appreciate it. Love it. Hopefully you get your food on time and you let me know that. <laughs> you let me know this time. <laughs> Derek Hall, President and CEO. Thank you, Derek. Uh, thank Good you luck guys. this season. Thank we'll you. talk soon. Derek Hall, President and CEO. 